Too easy for Luca tonight, man. Too easy for Luca. He wasn't as efficient as he could have been. But even though he had four turnovers, was a minus nine on the game, which I found intriguing. I feel like uh, the Timberwolves played mm, not... I don't know how to say it. Played Luca bad, in my opinion. And I feel like Luca can dominate the Jaden McDaniels matchup. Obviously, Jaden offensively, uh, if he keeps playing like this, it doesn't matter that much, obviously. Because, obviously, Anthony Edwards and Carl Anthony Downs, you suppose, are not going to be playing as badly as they were today uh, every game of the series, of course. But I really do feel like for Luca. Uh, the Jaden McDaniels matchup is not great uh, for Minnesota. I feel like they left him on an island too too much. And to me, Luca's going to adjust. Uh, he's going to get the whistles that he didn't get here in Dallas, probably. And if he doesn't, he's going to probably adjust properly and be, you know, shoot straight over Jaden McDaniels, no matter the contest, because he's just stronger uh, and bigger. Uh, and I was thinking, like, maybe they're going to put Ant on him and Ant can match the physicality, but that didn't look the case whenever the end was defending anyone today because he was getting cooked. Uh, so he needs to be better defensively and offensively. He just looked out of it, man. Uh, he defended Kyrie, obviously. And I feel like Jaden McDaniels on Kyrie and end on Luka might make more sense down the line anyway. But we'll see. That's just my, my biggest thought of this game. Obviously, the perimeter shooting uh, is going to be huge. Uh, but the rebounding battle to me is more important. Obviously, the Timberwolves shot lights out. No, I mean, not lights out, but they uh, weren't able to get anything in the paint, right? Paint, right? Because, I mean, PJ Washington, Derek Jones Jr., Daniel Gaffer, Derek Lively have just been incredible defending the paint. And overall, Dallas has been incredible defending the paint in these playoffs. Uh, and, I mean, they got hot, right, from the three point line. Uh, even Ant was 5 of 12 from the three point line, and he couldn't get into a rhythm in the paint. Um, anyway. Um, <laughs> anyway, 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 my point was the rebounding is something that I think Minnesota has to do better and has to win the rebounding battle. The Mavs won the rebounding battle tonight by eight, and that to me was the biggest difference, while also letting Luka just cook, in my opinion, too easily. And Kyrie was huge early on, right? He set the tone offensively. He was as aggressive as we've seen him these playoffs offensively early in the game. And he was getting whatever he wanted against Anthony Edwards. Uh, so that was obviously huge. Uh, and I mean, it's a bad loss, right? Obviously, our two best players played their worst game of these playoffs, maybe. Obviously, Ant had worst game, but considering the stakes, uh, the how winnable the game was, maybe this was his, you know, in a way, worst game. But Carl and Tritans, for sure, he was pressing. I thought he was just pressing. Even though he had some good moments in the fourth and in the second half, he was really pressing in this game and was a little out of pocket. Um, but Nasrid wasn't that much better defensively either, right? Um, but maybe you would have liked this offense more in this game. 24 minutes for him. Ah, no. Uh, Nikki Alexander Volker continues to be hit or miss. He either hits everything or misses everything. Tonight was one of those nights where he missed everything. But they got a huge game from Kyle Anderson, right? He was... Uh, great in his minutes, offensively especially. Uh, but, I mean, the Mavs won despite losing the three-point battle by 12 three-pointers. That's what tells you about their paint defense, about Anthony Edwards just not being uh, able to get into the paint, or he was he looked tired, obviously, which might be from running around chasing Kyrie, which might be from um, uh, from just overall, the amount of games the Timberwolves played against the Nuggets, of course, and going into that altitude, I don't know, probably all plays a little bit of a factor. Uh, but it looked too easy for Dallas, in my opinion, inside the paint. They shot 49%. Uh, they missed some good looks on the three-point line, especially Luka. He keeps forcing it a little bit. Uh, but inside the paint, I felt like they were breaking into the paint and getting whatever they wanted offensively. Uh in my, that's just my point. Obviously, it wasn't like they were lights out, right? They, how many points did they have? 108 points. So that wasn't like the biggest offensive explosion. But boy, I think they pushed the right buttons. And I think they need to show Luca very many, you know, more looks because I felt like it was just too simple for him the game, right? Some double teams, which obviously he'll pass off of really well. Uh, some, some double teams when he was in the post, 
But it was a lot of him on an island with Jaden McDaniels, and I don't like that matchup for Minnesota. I know Jaden is a great defender, uh, but to me, that's just a mismatch. And I feel like Kyrie uh, against and obviously the speed clearly plays a factor in there. So I feel like that could be a switch that the Timberwolves make. Uh, but of course, and was getting cooked by Luca and if I mean, he was switched onto him today, so might not be the move anyway. I don't know. I don't know, but uh, you expect Towns and Edwards to play better. I don't know if you expect Jaden McDaniels to keep shooting like he has been, but I mean, he's on a hot streak, so maybe. But I mean, the percentages will even out, right? And the three-point shooting looked sustainable from the way, uh, you know, the shot, the, the three-point shooting looked. Yeah, they made some tough ones, but... Uh, there were good looks from the three-point line, even though Dallas has been contesting great. And like I said, the paint defense is incredible. So um, I think they'll win game two, Minnesota there is. But we'll see, man. We'll see. Uh, I think Kuluka can make some adjustment where he is going to go quicker up with it against Jaden McDaniels, not look for the foul. Uh, obviously, PJ Washington, even though he hit the clutch once, right? He missed some wide open three-pointers today. The Mavs had some really great looks from the three-point line. Uh, and they weren't hitting them. Uh, Luca, whenever he catches and shoots, right? <laughs> Just funny. But he was sensational in the fourth quarter. He took over that game. Five of eight, 15 points. Sensational performance. Derek Lively defensively again. Just everywhere. On the boards. Everywhere. The Mavs just have such a great energy on the boards. I gotta give them so much props for their energy of the boards. And Derek Lyle has been, like I said, sensational defensively. The paint protection is incredible. He has an impeccable timing. Impeccable passer. Great rebounder. Uh, and he's been hitting his free throws, so shout out to him. Um, and uh, yeah, really good game one, really fun game one. Such a shame I had it spoiled in a way. I didn't hear it completely, but I heard uh, the name Luca in our, you know, my grandpa, grandma lives with us, and she had the TV on, and I heard the name Luca. So I was like, yeah, the match probably won. <laughs> uh, Anyway, as always, be kind to and others. No edits today, probably. I have too much going on. A huge test tomorrow, but I'll be here after the test with Indiana against Boston, and then obviously game two of this series. Anyway, as always, thank you all for listening, for watching, and I'll catch you all tomorrow.